Hello everyone. Today is sort of a vloggy style video where I talk about my week and then eventually I talk about my newest personality trait, which is dark academia. If you wanna hear my thoughts on the dark academia book, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, while I do my makeup, then just keep on watching. Hello everyone. How was your week? Mine? <laughs> Mine went swimmingly. I didn't do too much during the week, but my husband and I did have an eventful weekend. Pretty much all week, I just cooked and I read, like a lot. Excuse my cat, if you can hear him. He's very hungry right now. So, we didn't do too much during the week. I mostly just read and cooked. I cook a lot. Pretty much all of our meals I cook. I really like cooking and baking. I pretty much cook all of our meals at home, aside from our occasional Dave's Hot Chicken around the corner from us. On Saturday though, my husband and I went to the Magic Market pop-up in LA, which was so cool by the way. It was at Heritage Square. Uh, it's like a little museum of like old homes. So they had a witchy market. So it had a bunch of like crystals and herbs and they had like a sound bath and they even had yoga, I think in that like old church over there. Oh, by the way, I'm doing a look that is inspired by Camilla from The Dark History, if you can't tell by my collegiate outfit. <laughs> I was trying to find an outfit that screamed like money shmoney, but <laughs> this is about all I could do. I look like I just shop at H&M, which I do. It is also like <laughs> 85 degrees today, so you know, it's all for content. This turtleneck is killing me though. So at the market, they had a ton of vendors. I think it was like 75 vendors or something. It was really cool though. There was like a lot of crystals and like herbs and teas and like a lot of bath products, which was really cool. So Heritage Park, or sorry, Heritage Square um, is this area in LA where there's a bunch of like old Victorian homes so in the 60s, they basically wanted to take down all of the, the Victorian homes in LA. And so the historical society decided that they wanted to preserve some of that history. And so they basically packed up all of those homes and then moved them into kind of like a museum area. It's really cool though. There, I want to say there's like six, six or seven like old Victorian homes kind of lumped together in the same area. If you ever get a chance to go, you should go. I wanna go back and do like a full tour because when we went, they were doing just like really short tours where you only got to look inside three of the homes and they only kept you on the ground level where they had done all of the like renovations or I guess it's not a renovation. What would you refer to it as? A restoration, that's what it was, a restoration. So the market was super cool. I only got a couple of items while I was there. I wasn't trying to spend a bunch of money. It was just really cool to see all the vendors though in one area. Most of those little witchy markets are usually pretty small. Like the one I went to a couple weeks ago. I mean, I think there was like maybe about 15 to 20. So it was really cool to see so many in one place. So I only got a couple things, but I did get this really cool tea from Jupiter's Moon. I'll make sure to list the vendors down in the description. It is her summer solstice tea and it is so good. So she said to cold brew it. So um, I think I just put like a tablespoon of the leaves into a jar and I put it in the fridge overnight. Just put a little bit of sugar in it um, after it was done brewing. Oh my gosh, it was so good. There was hibiscus in it. So it's this beautiful like red pinky color. It's so pretty. And it tasted so good. She had correspondences listed on the package and it said the correspondences for the summer solstice tea were purification, 
concentrating, transformation, and independence. I also got some bath bombs and some soaps from Moon Garden Soapery. I got a peach, a lavender, and a rose one, I think. Everything smells so good though. Oh, I also got a soap. I am obsessed with shower care, if you can't tell. Speaking of soaps though, my mom also <laughs> sent me <laughs> such a sweet package of, she got me some soaps from Ophelia's Soapery. If you haven't watched her videos on YouTube, please do. They're so like relaxing to watch. She got me a sample pack though and oh my gosh, they smell so good. And they look stunning. Ophelia does such beautiful designs on all of her soaps. I'm so excited to actually go home to my mom's house for a couple of days. I get to see her and hang out in the garden. I might go see my little nephew too. I have a long road trip tomorrow ahead of me. But I'm excited. I cannot do it with these sleeves. Ugh. Okay, so on to the book review. Quick little synopsis of the book. So The Secret History by Donna Tartt takes place in the 1980s in Vermont at a prestigious college. I believe it's a liberal arts college. Which I don't even think that's a degree anymore. I'm pretty sure when I went back to school like five years ago, they didn't even allow that to be a major anymore. So this isn't a spoiler because it's literally like the first sentence of the book in the prologue actually, but it opens with our main character taking place in a murder. And then essentially the book rewinds and the story starts with Richard, our main character, joining this elite bougie school. Also, Tara and Sophia, if you're watching, don't watch anymore. My sister and my sister-in-law are reading this book at the same time because we're doing a little book club. So Richard sees this group of rich and wealthy students at his school and is so like infatuated with them that he wants to like join their program, um, which is to study Greek with a specific teacher. His name is Julian. Richard is so like broken and lonely because his home life was really terrible, but he sees this group of kids and he like wants to join the inner sanctum and be a part of their like little inner circle. Come to find out, it's literally one of the worst decisions of his life. <laughs> So the thing that I loved most about the book is how it was split up into like two different sections. It was like book one and book two. In book one, it was very like hazy and dreamy and it was beautiful. Like the way they romanticized the campus. Ugh, plain. So the way they romanticized the campus was beautiful. I loved everything about it. And then by the second part of the book, pretty much the halfway point, you're almost like snapped back into reality and you have to deal with like the after effects of everything, which I thought was brilliant. Initially, you're led to believe that like all of these students that Richard is like obsessed with are like magical and philosophers. But <laughs> as you keep reading, you realize like these characters are so like, phony everyone is a phony it was like once the mystery was gone and the curtain was lifted you find out how flawed and terrible all of these people are in the story oh potter's flying everywhere honestly julian the teacher was the worst so i read the physical copy but i also listened to the audiobook at the same time and I don't know if it was like the narrator from the audiobook 
or just his actual character, but I found him so phony and pretentious. The way all the students romanticized him in this like dreamlike fashion, it was like so weird. It was like equal parts fascinating, but like kind of gross at the same time. Of course, they looked at him like a mentor as you would with a teacher, but they almost just felt like he could do no wrong, which I mean, that's obviously part of the human experience is, you know, messing up and doing wrong things sometimes. But obviously this book takes everything to a whole nother level. I just found him so like pretentious. Honestly though, the story was definitely chef's kiss. It was fascinating. It had like themes of obsession and betrayal, like hedonism and like naivety almost. And the writing, ugh, don't get me even get, don't even get me started on the writing. The prose was like vivid and poetic. I could almost like taste the words in my mouth, if that makes any sense. It was absolutely stunning. The way that Donna Tart described like the campus and like the seasons was just so beautiful and romantic. Like I can see why so many people are obsessed with this book because you know, your girl's one of them now. If I can give you any advice about this book, don't read too much of the reviews and just go into it kind of blindly. It was so good. I mean, it really gives you that sort of like escapism that you seek in a book. Oh God, I went too crazy with the blush. Oh no. This is taking a different turn. I do not feel like Camilla would wear this much. I feel like Camilla would be very tired, which is why we're gonna go heavy on the bottom liner. Cause you know, when you're haunted by murder and guilt and anxiety, I can't imagine you're getting much sleep. I think one of the reasons why I am so attracted to like academia or dark academia books is probably because, so I only got my associate's degree. I ended up getting my associate's degree in biomedical sciences. Cause you know, I thought I was gonna go into nursing, but lo and behold, I did not. And I always think it's so interesting to read about these like tragic <laughs> collegiate experiences, I guess. And for the final touch of my Camilla makeup, I feel like she would sport a dark lip. like kind of messy <laughs> if you can't tell by my glowing review already um, five out of five stars definitely it's one of those books I wish I could go back and read again and have it be the first time it was so good to be engrossed in a book is just one of the most magical feelings and I was definitely captivated from literally the beginning to the end. It was so good. I almost don't even feel like I had the words to describe how much I loved it. Here's the final look. It went very haunting, you know, like I haven't slept in weeks. I mean, I don't have her, I think she's described as like boyish and petite and with blonde hair, no less, which, you know, definitely not what I look like, but you know, we tried. Thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me as I did my Camilla inspired makeup. I'll make sure to link any of the products that I use down below in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Is she giving rich student? <laughs>